Hey everybody, it's Jody Giles, and I get to help us look at this passage, Luke 20, verse 9. The, it's very intense. Very, very intense. This is a very tough parable. It's not a tough parable to understand. It's a tough parable to receive if you are one of the Jewish teachers of the law, one of the leaders. It's clear that God owns the vineyard. He's left the vineyard in the care of the Jewish leaders. And then it says he has sent multiple um, servants to them and they've killed each one. And then it says, what shall I do? And he sends his son. Surely they'll listen to him, but they kill him too. And then Jesus says, so what's the master going to do? He's going to come back and there will be very harsh judgment. He will kill those people and uh, the vineyard will be given to others. The people say in response, understanding the parable and the moment, they say in response, God forbid. And then Jesus asks the question, well, what was the meaning of the parable from, or I'm sorry, of the psalm from David? By the way, the very same psalm that they were singing two days ago as he rode in, um, in into Jerusalem. What's the meaning of this psalm where it says, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. We've heard a lot about stones in the last couple of chapters. When he was riding into Jerusalem and they were all singing his praises and the Pharisees said, you need to tell them to be quiet. Jesus said, if they were quiet, the stones would sing. And this also reminds me, when I think of stones, I think of uh, Peter. When Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, you've answered correctly on this rock, this stone, I will build my church. It occurs to me that the Jewish leaders, they were looking for a Messiah. They didn't think Jesus fit the profile. And they certainly didn't think he was the son of the living God. And then this parable continues. He says, everyone who falls on that stone, this idea that he is the Messiah and the son of the living God will be broken to pieces. And if it falls on you, you will be crushed. I want to keep this ever in mind that our foundation for the church is that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. But I also want to remember that those who reject Jesus as Messiah and Son of the living God, it doesn't go well. Thank God that Jesus has laid a firm foundation for our church.